Shalom. December 19, 2020. Fourth of Tevet, 5781. The prophetic Haftarah for this Sabbath Shabbat is 1 Kings 3 through 4 1. King Solomon was now a king over all Israel. The prophetic Haftarah Torah reading for today is King Solomon is now a king over all of Israel. King Solomon, the richest and the wisest man of all time. Like Trump with his genius IQ and his riches, this is the analogy. Trump is now president of the United States. I said Trump is now president of the United States. And he will do his second term in Jesus' name. Thou hast performed thy promise. God said he would make Trump president for a second term. And now thou hast performed thy promise. You, O Lord, have continued this great kindness to him by giving him his giving him to occupy his throne, as now is the case. Now is the case. The case might be before the Supreme Court, but the case is already closed in the courts of heaven. Trump will get the second term. King Solomon is now king over all Israel. Thou hast performed thy promise and thy prophetic word to your prophets, and you have continued this great kindness to Trump by giving him the throne to occupy for another term. And now, and now is the case. That's the prophetic Torah reading for today. Also, the, um, the Torah portion for today is um, about the seven years and Joseph interpreting the dream. I'll talk about that in a second. I'm just going to read some scriptures. From 1 Kings 3 first, though. I'm trying to decide if I want to read the whole chapter or just get to the good stuff. Well, I'll just start at verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask, what shall I grant you? And Solomon said, You dealt most graciously with your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and in integrity of heart. You have continued this great kindness to him by giving him a son to occupy his throne, as is now the case. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am a young lad with no experience in leadership. Solomon said, you have made me king, but I am just a lad with no experience or leadership skills. Just like Jeremiah. Jeremiah, when God called Jeremiah to be a prophet, Jeremiah said, ah, but Lord, I cannot speak for I am just a child. I have no experience or leadership skills. God always chooses people that cannot do the job so that he will get all the glory. And then in verse 8, Solomon says, Your servant finds himself in the midst of the people you have chosen, a people too numerous to be numbered or counted. Grant then your servant an understanding, an understanding mind to judge your people, to distinguish between good and bad, for who can judge this vast people of yours? That's a good word. Solomon asked for wisdom. 
And God asked Solomon what he could do for him. He said, grant your servant understanding. Give me an understanding mind to judge your people and to distinguish between the good ones and the bad ones. For who can judge this vast number of people of yours? Sometimes we need good understanding to know the good and the bad so we can go from glory to glory and leave our footstools under our feet. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this thing. And God said to him, because you asked for this, you did not ask for long life, but you did not, and you did not ask for riches. You did not ask for the life of your enemies, but you asked for discernment and dispensing justice. God's bringing justice to the earth. God's bringing justice to the earth. It's <laughs> starting right now. And now, do as you have spoken. He says, I now do as you have spoken. Excuse me. The coffee's getting to me this morning. I now do as you have spoken. I grant you a wise and a discerning mind. There has never been anyone like you before, nor, nor will anyone like you arise again. Wow, how would you like for God to speak that over you? Solomon asked for discernment and dispensing good judgment over the people. And God says, I now do as you have spoken, and I grant you a wise and discerning mind. There has never been anyone like you before, nor will anyone be like you ever again. Wow. And then Solomon became the wisest and richest man in the world. But later on, of course, he made a fatal mistake when he married a pagan woman. And that's a word too right there. And I also grant you what you did not ask for granted you what you did not ask for, both riches and glory all your life, the like of which no king has ever had. God's going to make Trump go down in history as the greatest president in the history of the United States after he beats back the new world order, Sodom and Gomorrah one more time for his second term. And he will give him both riches and glory all his life, the like, the like of which no king has ever had. Hmm. And I will further grant him long life. If you will just walk in my ways and observe my laws and commandments, as did your father David. That's the key. That's the key walking in his ways and observing his laws and his commandments and stay in his word and his worship. That's the key to being king. So, there's a lot here to read. I might read a little bit more. I'm just taking notes while I'm reading this myself. Just doing this. I just woke up. It's 7.30 a.m. now, Sabbath Shabbat, December 19th. This is really good. Also, the Torah reading for today is really good also. There's just so much here. I'm just looking through all these scriptures. And you might know the end of this chapter was when the two women were fighting over the baby. And 
Solomon used his gift of wisdom for the first case that came before him after God gave him discernment in dispensing justice first case came before him to judge and it was two women fighting over a baby it was two prostitutes fighting over a baby they both had a child the same age a little baby at the same time and one of the prostitutes rolled over on the baby while she was sleeping at night and killed it so she got up and replaced um, her baby with the live baby of the other prostitute. So when the other prostitute woke up and her baby was dead, she looked at it and she said, this isn't my baby, this is your baby. You took my baby, you know, in the middle of the night. And um, so they went, they had a big fight and they ended up before King Solomon, the judge. And Solomon took out his sword. And he was about to cut the baby in two give one half of the baby to each prostitute but the real mother of the baby cried out and said please don't kill my baby and the other prostitute that stole the baby says go ahead and cut it in two and, and Solomon knew who was the real mother Whew, I felt the Holy Ghost on that that was all God so Solomon gave the baby to the rightful mother. And that was his first act of um, discerning wisdom and justice as the king, the new young king of Israel. Hmm. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty far powerful. <laughs> Holy Ghost came all over me when I read that. When I recited that, because I already knew it, I didn't have to read it. I know the word. Solomon said, fetch me a sword. And a sword was brought to him. He said, cut the live child in two and give half one and half to the other. But the woman whose son it was pleaded with the king. And she was overcome with compassion for her son. And she said, please, Lord, give her the live child and don't kill it. And the other said, it shall be neither yours nor mine, cut it in two. So, Solomon knew then who the real mother was. And then when Israel heard about the decision that the king had rendered, and they saw his wisdom, they stood in awe of the king. For they saw that he possessed divine wisdom to execute judgment. God is bringing divine wisdom to execute judgment in the whole world right now. And he's going to put Trump in as king, like Solomon. He will go down in history as the greatest president in the history of the United States. Not that he's so great in his own self, but it's because of God has given him favor. And he's given him a genius IQ to always defeat the stupid devil. And Trump marked all the ballots before the election because he knew they were going to cheat. That's wisdom. Now King Solomon was king over all Israel. If you read chapter 4, it names all his prophets and priests. But I'm going to skip past that I do like to read, uh, I do like to look up the names of the Hebrew prophets, though, because they all have meanings. But the Torah reading, the prophetic Torah reading for today, not the, not, I mean, I'm sorry, not the prophetic Torah reading. The prophetic Torah reading is 1 Kings 3, but the regular Torah reading is Genesis 41 and it's about the dream that God gave the Pharaoh so I'm just going to skip down to verse 25 
Genesis 41, 25, Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has told Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven healthy cows are seven years, and the seven healthy ears are seven years. It is the same dream. The seven lean and ugly cows, <laughs> the seven lean and ugly cows that followed are seven years, as are also the seven empty ears scorched by the east wind that are seven years of famine. Joseph was, was given the interpretation of the dream to the Pharaoh about seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. It is just as I have told Pharaoh, God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Immediately ahead are seven years of great abundance. After Trump gets elected, we're going to have seven years of great abundance, great restoration, and then will come seven years of famine, and all the abundance in the land of Egypt will be forgotten. And the land is ravaged by famine. No trace of the abundance will be left in the land because of the famine thereafter, for it shall be very severe. If you think we're in a famine now, we're getting ready to see abundance for seven years. Then after the seven years, then will come the real famine. This is just a trial run. Accordingly, let Pharaoh find a man of discernment and wisdom and set him over the land of Egypt. So Pharaoh sent, sent Joseph. Joseph came out of the prison, went to the palace. I'm going from the pit to the palace in Jesus' name. I'm going from the pit to the palace in Jesus' name. Only God can do that. And let Pharaoh take steps. Oh yeah, I don't want to skip this. Joseph went from the pit to the palace and said, Accordingly, let Pharaoh find a man of discernment and wisdom and set him over the land of Egypt. That's what, that's what also the prophetic Torah is about Solomon. God found Solomon, a man of discernment and wisdom, and placed him over Israel. And at the same time, God found Pharaoh, a man of discernment and wisdom, and set him over the land of Egypt. And he made Joseph ruler of all the land, and second in command only to Pharaoh. And let Pharaoh take steps to appoint overseers over the land, and organize the land of Egypt in the seven years of plenty, that all the food all these good years that are coming be gathered, and that the grain be collected under Pharaoh's authority as food to be stored up in the cities for the famine, that that food be a res reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which will come upon the land of Egypt, so that the land may not perish in the famine. Mm -hmm. The plan pleased Pharaoh and all his courtiers. And Pharaoh said to his courtiers, Could we find another like him, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is none so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my court, and by your command shall all my people be directed. Went from the pit to the palace, he was put in charge of all the people because of his discerning and wisdom. Only with respect to the throne shall I be superior to you. Pharaoh further said to Joseph, See, I put in charge of all the land of Israel. I put you in charge of all the land of Israel. He removed his signet ring from his hand, and Pharaoh put it on Joseph's hand. And he had dressed him in rows of fine linen. 
excuse me, and put a gold chain about his neck and made him to ride in, in his chariot of his second in command. And they cried before him, Abret, Abret. Thus he placed him over all the land of Egypt. I'll, I'll look up that word Abret and put it in the comments. Abret. Because he placed him over all the land of Egypt. He called him, he called him, they cried, they cried Abret because he placed him over all the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh took off his signet ring, just like in um, Haggai chapter 2, when God told Zerubbabel, who was a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ, I'll make you my signet ring. And, and Zerubbabel led the Israelites on the glory road back to Israel to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. Zerubbabel was wise. God gave him scrolls from heaven. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have Pharaoh, yet without you no one shall lift up hand or foot in all of Egypt. Pharaoh then gave Joseph a new name. Pharaoh gave Joseph a new name, Zaphonath, Zaphonath, Paniah. And he gave him a wife, the daughter of Potiphar. Thus Joseph emerged in charge of the land of Egypt. He, remember Potiphar's wife was the one that accused him of rape. And put him in prison for all those years in the pit. So he ended up getting Potiphar's daughter for his wife. I don't want to testify. God gave him a new name. I'll write the meaning of that name in the comments also. And um, gave him a signet ring and a new name. God gave me a dream on July 20th, 2019. And he says, I was an ancient prophetic gemstone, a royal diadem, a representative of Jacob's family, the impartaker. And he showed me in a vision a white crystal opal set in gold like a signet ring. Gave me a new name and he showed me a signet ring. And after Jesus saved me, he slayed me in the spirit for an hour and showed me his glory in the third heaven. He covered my head with his blood and he filled my belly with living water. And I started going to church at this prophet's church where I was the catcher and the security and the usher and a few other things. And then somebody came into the church and lied on me and said I had raped somebody. And they tried to kill me after God exposed their lie in front of the whole church. Just like Joseph. After that, I went to the pit in the prison in the wilderness for about 17 or 18 years. And then God gave me the vision last year. Thank you, Jesus. Everything works to good. All things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. In Jesus' name.